Earlier this year, I featured the largest steam engine in the world. The big boys were impressive, and despite running on standard gauge track, they clearly could never run on the UK network. I also featured the KF, and that in itself is a monster engine. But what if I told you of another monster? Chances are there are few that remember it, and even fewer alive that have seen one. It was a silent workhorse, pulling freight in the mountains of Scotland. This week, I'm proud to take a look at Nigel Gresley's largest masterpiece, the Mikado engines. In 1925, the LNER class P1 was unveiled to the world. It was Nigel Gresley's largest engine yet. 2393 and her sister, 2394, were created specially for freight and were considered to be the most powerful freight locomotives ever to grace the UK network at the time. Externally, the two engines sported a new type of wheel arrangement, the 282. The 282 were a not a new concept. Built in 1898, the US were the first to pioneer this wheel arrangement. The arrangement allowed for the firebox to be wider and deeper, as the firebox would be placed behind the driving reels rather than above them. This allowed for more power and a greater capacity for steam generation. The wheels themselves would be larger, giving them a better turning diameter and greater traction and because the centre of gravity was shifted to between the second and third driving wheels rather than over the centre driving wheel on most other locomotives, it was better balanced for a smoother ride. It was the Japanese that took this real arrangement on board. They created a new class of locomotives called the 9700. They were built at the Baldwin Locomotive Works for the Nippon Railway. Because of their sheer size, the English would refer to them as Mikado, which is the Old English term or translation for Emperor. In Japanese, the term Mikado means Honourable Gate or Palace. It's a little confusing, but the name Mikado stuck for any engine with the 282 wheel arrangement. Things didn't go well for the P1 class. They were very coal hungry and their trains would often be too long for many passing routes and loops. Four more engines were proposed, but after issues with their boosters that were fitted to help them start and run hills, and the tracks proved to be unsuitable to such large engines, the two P1s were relegated to just one route between New England and Fern Park. Firemen would dread touching them, knowing how coal hungry that they were, and getting them fired would take considerable time. In the end, the two engines were considered simply uneconomical to run. There was a brief reprieve for one of the P1s, as one of the engines was trialled for a passenger service, but after only reaching a top speed of 65 miles an hour, and with the firemen thoroughly worn out from feeding the beast, it was clear it was just not cut out for the UK network. While the P1 was struggling, the LNER were having problems as well. The line between Edinburgh and Aberdeen had become notorious with the company. Its steep, large steep gradients were a challenge, even with Gresley's new Pacific classes that were being produced en masse in the 1920s. Even the newly built a Freeze was struggling with this stretch of track. Gresley knew he needed more power and more traction, and he drew inspiration from overseas railways, especially those from the Paris and Orleans Railway. Gresley learned from the P1's mistakes, and rather than have the P1 be transferred to this more suitable track, he designed the new P2. It would still be a Mikado. He liked the advantages of the wheel arrangement, but it simply had to be more economical. He took the best from the A3, the best from the P1, and the first P2, number 2001, Cock of the North, rolled out of Doncaster Works in 1934. 2001 differed from many of the predecessors in looks alone. Its front was similar to the Class W1, which had performed well in wind tunnel testing, and a new cab front allowed for better visibility. Its smoke box contained a new chimney system, which could easily be altered, allowing for experimentation to gain the best efficiency. The next engine of the production line, number 2002, Earl Marshall, 
carried all the same improvements of her sister, but also carried a second set of smoke deflectors and a new valve gear, set to resemble its specific cousins. It outperformed 2001. It was so economical, all of their engines in this class was built to the 2002 modifications. 2003 Lord President had the most drastic changes. By now, Gresley had designed and produced the A4 with its streamlined shape and unmistakable wedged front. 2003 also gained this wedged front, which worked better at clearing the smoke and the steam from the driver's view rather than the use of smoke deflectors. The smoke deflectors were removed off 2002 and 2001 in favour of the new wedge shape. 2004 had all the modifications of the others, but had a modified by blast pipe bypass control from the cab which would be later replaced, but this wasn't as successful as previous designs. 2005 lacked the double chimney, and while the last engine 2006 had a completely redesigned boiler and a larger firebox. In all, the whole fleet was completed just one year after construction began. 2001 was tested as soon as she stood on the rails, with a 19 bogey carriage train between Kings Cross, Grantham and Barkston. She did well, averaging about 50 mile an hour. Impressed with the results, she was sent to France for further testing, before being put to work on the infamous Edinburgh lines. All six engines worked like quiet giants, pulling freight between Aberdeen and Edinburgh. But the onset of war and the reduction of the long freight trains would spell the end of the P1 and P2, with both classes meeting their fates between 1944 and 45. The P2 would be the first to go under the hammer. Citing unreliability, the fleet were modified and rebuilt. The Mikado wheels would be reduced to a 462 arrangement. The engines would retain their names, but ultimately they were now the new A2 Pacific and would go on to serve the LNER and later British Rail. The P1 girls would suffer a worse fate. Due to the declining freight, the two girls were sent to the Cutter's Torch in 1945, with only their boilers and tenders being reused on other engines. Unfortunately, none of the modified A2 survived with the decline of steam, but there are two glimmers of hope. The A1 Trust, the company responsible for the tornado, are hoping to bring the P2 back to life. It is rebuilding the P2 using Gresley's original designs and cutting edge technology. The engine is publicly funded and is estimated to take about seven to 10 years to build. It is hoped that the newest steam engine will hit the tracks as early as 2023. Hot on the heels of the A1 Trust is the P2 Locomotive Trust, Unlike the A1 Trust who is making a new engine entirely, the P2 Trust is hoping to recreate the 2001 Cock of the North in its A4 1938 rebuilt state. The, engine, the frames for the engines are currently being constructed and will be on tracks in a few years time. I've put both the Trust websites below and I hope you consider helping to support both of these Trust's efforts to get these engines to a new generation. Gresley's greatest and most powerful locomotive should never be forgotten, and I want to thank both the A1 and the P2 Trust for highlighting Gresley's Mikado, the powerful and almost forgotten workhorses of the Highlands. <laughs>